Right, before we get started, here are the materials you will need. Whatever paper you would like to use today, I am using an A4 hot pressed 300 GSM watercolour paper because I will most likely be adding some watercolours to this after. But quite often I will just use um, artist grade paper. I do also have a cutting mat today which is providing a smooth surface for me. Um, but you can also just use it straight out of the book, but watercolour paper I did need to provide a mat for. Other materials you will need. First things first, you will need a compass. Mine has an inbuilt pencil, but if yours doesn't, make sure you have a pencil as well that can slide down into it. Along with those two, you will also need an eraser, you will definitely need this, and you may need a sharpener depending on your pencil. The last essential is a ruler. I suggest using a plastic ruler because you can see through it when you are doing the lines. Now, what are we actually going to use to create the Mandela? Uh, you can do it in black and white or you can do it in colour and you can really use whatever materials you have on hand. So for my black and white mandalas I use, like to use a variety of thicknesses. So I've got a 0 0.3, 0 0.1, the smallest I've got is a 0 0.05 and I go up to a 0.8. So that helps me create interest in my mandalas using different thicknesses. You can also use things like the very popular at the moment uh, flat pens just to create some colour if you enjoy using these. If you don't enjoy using these, there is always things like fine liners in whatever colour you would like, in whatever thickness you would like. I, I have um, 0.3 these ones are and I've got a few different packets that are like this as well. Other things you can use, this is a permanent marker and it is a metallic one. So I use this on black paper. Uh, basic things like connector pens, which are very popular, especially for kids. So kids, you should have any form of text. Obviously I've got connect pens, whatever text you have, you can use. And then I've also got a white marker, Uni Posca, for when I do things on black pieces of paper. So those are your materials you will need. You will want a smooth surface to work on. But apart from that, I'll show you some examples now. So you can use whatever paper you would like for this. Today I'm using white watercolour paper, but I have also used black paper. This is a Winsor & Newton, it's just a black paper pad. And when I first got it, I just went over and marked all of the different colours so I could see how they would work on the page. And then I went ahead and created a metallic design mandala using uh, my big metallic permanent markers. Now I have just chosen the basic metallic colours, silver, gold and I've got a bronze as well. But I do have other colours that I could be choosing from as well. And obviously white on black looks great as well and it pops out. So that's metallics on black paper and you can see how the white turns out on there as well. I'll show you some of my other ones which are just done on A3 paper. And there's just a few different design styles here that I will show you. So this one I went for a more geometric shape. This is done on A3 paper. As you can see, it's much bigger than my A4 um, watercolour. And it's that nice crisp white compared to the watercolour as well. This was just done out of a visual art diary. It's not overly thick paper. Uh, it's just what I had on hand at the time. So this one I've gone for more of a geometric design. My next one I chose to create a rainbow effect, slightly more organic with a little bit of geometric inspired, but definitely much more of an organic feel with the leaves and the petal looking shapes. And this one I chose to go um, in rainbow colour order. Next one is also a coloured one, but not a rainbow design. This one I incorporated geometric and organic shapes. So I've got the geometric out here and then I've gone more organic on the inside. And my last one that I'll show you, a black and white one which is slight, which is more organic just with a slightly, a slight edge of geometric in there. So there really is no rules when it comes to creating mandalas. You can create whatever shapes, whatever patterns, whatever textures you would like. So now let's get on to preparing it. So 
just off camera then on my A4 piece of paper I found the center spot. I like to do that obviously when I'm doing a singular design I want it to be as centered as possible. But before we even get started on the mandala, tip number one, have some sustenance. I've got my coffee here next to me. Obviously kids if you're doing this uh, have a water or a cordial or a juice or if you're a tea person have a tea but have something next to you adults as well because depending how much you go into your design and how detailed you go you will want something here to keep um, you hydrated I suppose and keep you awake in the case of coffee. Now that I've just turned it this way for you, now that I have my centre spot it is time to use the compass and we are going to create varying circles. So keeping it on that spot. Now there's no rule when it comes to creating these circles. You make them as big or as small as you like. My tip is press as lightly as you can. It will make a raising much, much easier. You can see I'll lift it up a bit there. You can see the circles that are coming together. And there we go. Now I've chosen to stop my circles so they don't go off the edge. Obviously you can continue to design and make it take up the whole page. It just won't be circles all the way out. Now my second tip is keep your compass handy because when you are designing you might find that you would like to add another circle in there so keep this handy nearby so that if you need to you can go ahead and add some more circles the next thing we need to do is we need to create some vertical and horizontal lines so using my guide that I have here before had here before I'm just going to create lines and I want to divide this circle up into eight. Now if you want to get really pedantic you can uh, measure in between these. So that one will sit about there. Um, but if not you can go ahead and just get it as close uh, as you can. I'm going to do this one in all black and white because I will be creating it uh, most likely into a watercolour piece so I'm just going to use my pigment liners to create this design. I'm most likely going to go for a bit more of an organic than a geometric but there is no rule. So let's just go ahead and get started straight away. Here is another tip for you rotate your paper as you go it's much easier than trying to get a nice even design so I rotate as I go it helps me keep my design as symmetrical as possible
you're seeing this video, it means I am happy with the final product. So I'll just show you the materials that I'm using today. Um, this is my colour swatch and today I'll be using the Bombay India inks by Dr. PH Martin and I'm using the teal, turquoise and the yellow. And I am also using this metallic nickel colour as well to just throw in some metallic. <clears throat> now this is going to be abstract. Um, I'm mainly going to do water and then I'm going to drop in the colours. So, hopefully it turns out well. <laughs> Is the finished product guys nice vibrant colors and there's a little bit of shimmer in the center there not too much but just enough <laughs> 